Um, it's great to see you all. Thank you so much for coming for the, the topic today. I'm absolutely thrilled to have the opportunity to speak with you both about this incredibly critical time in the workplace and this move towards hybrid and how we do it well. Before we get started, and we only have 20 minutes, so we're going to speak double speed, um, perhaps if I could ask you just to give a little bit of background, Maria, to, to yourself and, and your role. Yeah, sure. So hi, I'm Maria. Um, I'm an internal communi communications and employee engagement specialist, and I'm currently supporting Skipton Building Society with their journey for well-being and culture. Um, Prior to getting into the corporate world, I served in the military, including an operational tour of Iraq. Through that uh, journey, gravitated me through London, understanding more about mental agility and how that helps workplace resilience. And um, I'm really passionate about holistic well-being and how we can make employees happier and healthier in the workplace. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone, um, my name is Tedjal. Um, I work as a global wellbeing strategy lead at, at Standard Chartered Bank and I've been in the wellbeing space for about four years now. Um, my particular passion is around mental health and really focusing a little bit more on how can we really embed it within the culture of an organization so that it's not just about the tools and the learning that we provide. Um, my background before that was in reward. Um, and what that means is that now I think very much about the intrinsic side of reward and, and thinking about the things that employees value um, outside of just their, their paycheck as, as Rory was talking about earlier. So um, yeah, really happy to be here, thank you. Can you speak to me about diversity and inclusion in relation to hybrid work? Yeah, sure. So for us, again, at society, it's about our leaders role modeling, role, role modeling those behaviors, but also in the language that they speak. So that's really important. Um, from, from, the, from the way that we conduct our meetings, whether it's learning or team meetings, making sure those inclusive behaviors are really demonstrated so everybody feels included. I think um, hybrid working has actually been quite a, with all of its challenges, it's quite an opportunity to actually consider other dimensions of diversity as well. Um, and if I take an example, I myself am a bit of an introvert, so this is a little bit scary, but um, actually working from home has afforded me many benefits. I've spent more time with my family. Um, I've been able to do some of the creative work much easier, as, as sort of Rory was talking about earlier. And we, what we don't want to do is lose some of those benefits as we move uh, to whatever the new normal is. And, and so I think, again, it comes back to that individual piece. And I've seen some really interesting examples of what other companies are doing, which, and I think this is a real opportunity for us all to learn from each other, actually, because this great idea is being tested and experimented with. Um, but there are companies doing team charters. There are companies um, sort of allowing employees to talk about themselves um, at the beginning of, of meetings with new people. And I think it's sort of honing in on that human piece and saying what, what's really important that allows uh, us to create that really inclusive atmosphere. Um, yeah, I'll leave it there. <laughs> I think there's also something very interesting. Oh. There we go, thank you very much. Oh, we don't need to swap. Okay, super. Um, there's something also um, very interesting about the, the types of workforces experience of hybrid working. And within the workforce, there are, of course, many different types of workers, from frontline workers to um, you know, knowledge-based workers, etc. And I think it will be interesting to see how organizations can bring some of those benefits that you're talking about from a hybrid working perspective, which many people have gained from it, and, and find a way of applying those to all workers. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I think we could find ourselves in a position where there's real potential for inequality of what the working experience can be like. Um, and that will ultimately impact on organizations' ability to both attract and retain brilliant talent, which of course is what we all know is so important to successful organizations. So perhaps if I could ask you to, to speak to how you feel um, about hybrid working in relation to attracting and retaining talent. Thanks. It's hugely critical at this particular time. Employees have so much choice now, just like customers, and they've tried and tested it, the remote working. They've made it work for their environment. 
And so it's critical for employers to really have that choice for people. So they have that choice, flexibility, flexibility and freedom, but also their resourcing model needs to align to the hybrid model, including their values and culture, because often an employee can spot the signs when something's inauthentic. So your messaging does need to be sincere. When we rolled out hybrid working, we knew that actually just putting a process in place is not going to keep people in the organisation. It's, um, it's a great way of attracting people, but the retaining them is really key as well. And so we kept, set up a culture work stream specifically to identify any of the emerging challenges that were coming up um, that people were facing. And I think some of the key things that we've sort of really thought about are how do we take some of those challenges and make them an opportunity to, for, for, for introducing choice and allowing people to you know, use their own preferences? So a couple of examples are some well-being experiments that we've rolled out that teams can actually adopt um, and think about you know, what's important to them and how could they as a team uh, come together and, and improve their well-being but also water cooler moments and how to replicate those. And we've, we, we ran a hackathon um, and came up with some great ideas and we're developing two large ones, um, but actually we just rolled out very quickly um, sort of you know, 12 others that just helped to, to bring back some of those um, things that people have lost and, 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 and create that inclusion. Um, and hopefully with that culture piece you know, in mind, that will help to, to make hybrid working sort of something that's sustainable, but also keep, keep attracting and retaining colleagues. Thank you. So I, I'll, I'll stay on that topic of culture because I think that's really interesting. We, we probably, if we had had this conversation two years ago, would have really worried about the lack of face-to-face -face time, or many organizations would have done. I know some have been ahead of the curve with, with hybrid working. How do, there is so much value in, intuitively in the idea of being with people in person to facilitate good working, but also to help really cement a strong culture um, and to live a culture and demonstrate a culture. How can we ensure that culture is, is maintained if people maybe are not seeing one another? So how do we replicate those water cooler moments or those social moments in a digital hybrid world? I think being a global organisation, hybrid working is very much for us an extension of having international teams anyway. So um, I think that the key part comes in behaviour, communication and sort of showing care I think is, is where, where it comes in. So um, we, sorry I'm just trying to think of the, how you phrase the question. Um, we are, we are, again, just trying to make sure that the, the um, communication continues to be sort of consistent uh, with a human kind of element to it um, and that the behaviours are embedded in all of our processes and decision making. That's our aspiration, is that all decision making starts, starts from what is the human experience of that decision and um, is that going to help drive the behaviours that we, we want ultimately. And just to reinforce that point, we're exactly the same, amplifying those messages, consistent communication, and just making sure it's really transparent and authentic. I think that, that, that those ideas of both authentic and human leadership and, and an approach to hybrid working from those two positions is going to be absolutely key. And I also think that there is, um, Tajal, you mentioned at the beginning, this idea that actually there's a lot of learning to do as a community. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that that is something that events like today can be so valuable for, is to help us have these conversations collectively. Because as the world transitions, I think there's so much great work going on uh, across different organizations and sharing that in a really in, in, uh, kind of um, forth and kind of uh, intentional way can be very valuable. Mm, um, thank you both. So did you want to? I was just going to say, um, I was just going to say one of those things, well-being is not something that any of us compete in. We're all here because we want people to be their best and we want them to, to you know, really be able to do their, feel, thrive, I, I guess. So I really value these kind of events where actually, you know, you can share ideas and, and learn what's worked well for us. And I think this is a time that we need that the most. So, yeah, happy to chat to anyone. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> I'm going to put you on the spot. 
Um, and I'm going to ask if there's, we've got only a few seconds, but if there was one takeaway from you, if there was one thing that you could say, that, that's a really key thing to think about with hybrid working, what would it be? I see no one's grabbing the mic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to. I think the thing is uh, to keep giving choice as much as possible. I think in every, um, guy, every sort of uh, communication you have, it's not a, enforcing any particular sort of this must be done in a certain way. That's the thing that will prevent people from really embracing hybrid working and, and using it to their best advantage. So keep giving choice within reason um, as much as possible. And on the back of that, I think it's about listening to your employees, constantly listening and evolving, because again, it's a journey. So, so Jal and Maria, thank you so much for your time and sharing your insights. Yes, thank, you. thank you.